chapter 18 is a very interesting chapter first of all because it starts a new subject a new topic a new understanding in the powers that we have inside us if we would try and summarize let's say the first 17 chapters and we would say what is our key card that we can use in order to live first of all uh, um, a normal life um, a significant life a, a life with meaning and over and above that about a love a life with Yiddish kind of Judaism there is a certain card that the Alter Rebbe introduced in the 17 first chapters and what is that card it's something natural that we have inside us it's the idea of the human mind Moach Shalit alalev, the fact that the mind can take control over the heart and over the desires, that can very, very much help us live a meaningful life and a godly life as well. So when we face temptations, there's a certain method and a certain tool that we might be able to use in order to overcome these challenges. chapter 18. And this is the first 17 chapters. It is, a, a, um, it is 17 chapters, which means it takes time. And the Alter Rebbe went through these concepts again and again. Moach Shalit Alalev. The mind has a power, not only has a power, is considered also to be a bit of an emotion as well for this person. And it is a long journey. At the end, it pays off very well because once your mind is straight, and your head is in the right place, so it's easier for the body to follow the mind. And that is the first part that the Alter Rebbe teaches us on this journey of serving Hashem. Here, chapter 18, we will come across a different path of serving Hashem, also very useful, and in a certain way, a bit easier. And this is what is called Ahava HaMesuteret Belev Kol Yisrael. Or in Yiddish, a pinta leyid. And in English, a spark of Hashem. Each and every one of us, we have a hidden love inside that is part of who we are. And this is, uh, we can talk about this in different versions, in different ways. But I want to share one specific way. What does belief mean? How can we define belief? How would we define belief? Belief motivates us to certain actions. Right, that is one of the qualities that belief, or the effect that belief has on us. But what is belief itself? I think it's a need. You're saying that it's a need, which, uh, which says in a certain way, um, uh, I can describe it, you're right, I can describe it as a weakness or as a strength. And, and to, to, to speak about belief, I want to bring what sometimes people think that belief is, and they would um, express it in a way of um, uh, um, that it's not a strong tool. Belief is a weakness. Why is it a weakness? Because if you don't have answers to my strong questions, so you automatically say, well, I believe so. And I believe is, it doesn't serve you any good. It's like an excuse. You know, when you confront a person about his belief, he says, I believe. And automatically, the moment he says, I believe, you cannot challenge him. You cannot ask him questions. So is that the real idea of belief? Belief is also not to believe. It's also belief. So belief at the end, yeah. in positive and in negative, is a drive. A positive drive for, for a drive against. It's right. always a drive. Okay. So, I want, yes, Mara. Yeah, yeah I, I think belief is also an understanding and a faith and a knowledge that a concept or an event is true. Or, or as you said, that it's false, and that you know, there is action behind it to be able to to uh, to commit actions towards that right. that concept. Okay. 
So today it's important that you're bringing these things up because today we're going to try and explain the idea of belief according to Yiddishkeit and to see how our belief as Jews is totally different to any other belief if it's belief or a person that does not believe in certain things it's very different to the general concept of belief in other words in just in two words um, uh, uh, usually people describe belief as something external today we will learn how belief is internal yes Jacob. but you keep the difference believe and bitachon I, I we'll keep a difference between the two. Just okay. for today, maybe we'll speak about it towards the end. You can ask uh, um, again, and uh, we can speak about it then. So, there are those uh, um, uh, who believe that, uh, and this is how they describe any type of God, is that, uh, you know, you can believe that there's a cup of tea in space. Maybe you've heard this. Cup of tea in space. That that cup of tea is the one that is running the world. And he believes so. And there's nothing much to do about it. So, that is not our belief. We don't believe in Hashem in the same way that a person might believe that a cup of tea um, runs the world. And this is the meaning that belief is internal and it's not external. External belief means that it's something, once again, that I, it's not part of who I am. It's a theory that I believe in. It's, uh, it's like believing in any other conspiracy or any other story or, or tale, whatever it might be. So that's how people use the term of belief. But in Judaism, the belief that we have is not uh, um, in an external way that this is like a, a, some tale that people told me about and therefore I believe in it. No. The reason that we believe is because Hashem is actually part of who we are. The sense of belief, it doesn't start uh, 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 from a story that one mother told the other, uh, the child. And that child grew up based on that story. He liked that story very much. And since then, he believes in that story. That is not the connection between us and Hashem. The connection between us and Hashem is based on feeling. A belief that is a feeling that is not only a feeling, a feeling is an expression of it, but it's part of who we are. When we say, who really believes? The real one that believes is not my mind, it is not my hands, it's not uh, my mouth, it is my soul. That is the real believer in my life. And that soul, for it, it's not a fantasy, it's not a story, it's reality, it's who it is. The soul is a part of God, that's why it believes in God. If we use just our minds or our external part of our being, so we will use the term belief as in an external way. We would say, yeah, we believe in God the same way as we believe that um, in any other story or in any other theory. We believe that uh, um, man landed on moon. You don't need to believe in it. I mean, it's the it's it's, it's real. But for a, any other story that was never proved. I believe in it. Loch Ness Monster. Sorry? The Loch Ness if, Monster. If, yeah, the Loch Ness Monster, if you actually believe in it. Or even the stories of, uh, of the miracles that happened to our, to our forefathers and also in Egypt with the tribes, etc. Um, and in the desert that we are currently reading about in the Parsha, that has to do um, a, 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 with a bit more of a, a slightly external belief. Because... Um, Believing like in, 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 in Moshe Rabbeinu, I think that's also, Moshe Rabbeinu is an internal belief, but stories that happened, those are stories that based on a certain person that I rely on, I believe that that happened even though I did not see it. When I believe to my, to, in Hashem, it's not that I believe in some person that told me a story that he exists and I really relate to that story and I believe him, no. I believe him because it's part of who I am, I feel it. The same, yeah. the, play, the same applies to a, a Christian to a Muslim. Uh, uh, it could very much be, but on a lower level of, of God. You say that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, so, not I'm I saying, mean, but I, I the, mean, the Hasidus is saying yes. We say that. We say that, yeah. Not, but there's a certain level. So, 
for that, and this is the second level, we have to find evidence or, or, or remains of evidence to this idea that it's something internal. And today we're going to speak about this and we're going to try to find examples. We spoke about it previously. Um, we spoke about it previously in uh, other Shurim before about Abraham and about his challenges. But today we're also going to try and find some kind of evidence to this idea. But yes, it is a challenge. And, uh, uh, and also, before the two questions, also we believe that that's what it is. So we'll try to find uh, this thing and just we'll, we'll speak about it. I want to take your questions. Remember this, Basquale. Okay, remember Basquale, we'll speak about it. Daniel, yes, you wanted to ask? Yeah, I was going to tell you, why would that apply to a Muslim or Christian? No, okay. I mean, if it's a non-Jew, a non-Jew doesn't have nefeshalakis. He doesn't have a nefeshalakis. So, why would that apply to a non-Jew? Right. So, so, um, so first of all, could be, could very much be that you are right, and that's we're going to try and discover this, this through evidence. Nacha. And but there is one thing that even a Gentile can comprehend and can relate to, and that's the level of God that is Elohim, and that's why they are com um, command. They are under command not to worship idols. Why? Because they are expected to understand and to comprehend the fact that there's a God that created nature outside. That's so to that level, they can um, uh, connect to and relate to. You asking that's when, something else than a belief. That's just understanding. Right. But here we're speaking about beliefs. So that's right. So a yes. So um, so I think I think you are right. I'm not a hundred percent because. It could also be that the idea of a, a, a deep understanding comes from something else. The Gentile has a nefesh hasichlit, what is called. So that nefesh hasichlit that is here to investigate and to try and figure out a, a, a truth based on logic and on understanding, that is his tfisa um, of, of God. So you're right, it's not really a belief. But he is, on the other hand, you're right, it's not a belief because the way that he, uh, he comprehends it is through his understanding because that's where his soul is connected to. He has a nefesh hasichlit, which is the logical soul. And the nefesh hasichlit is already a different level. And, um, and also when Hashem created the world, he has several um, interactions with the world. He's got an, interac an interaction on the level of Elohim, which is nature which is logic, which is what we see all around us. And that is one level of understanding God. That is a level that everyone is uh, amongst the humans are um, under that command of understanding. And then the higher level of Yud Ke Vav Ke, which is Hashem's actual name, which is a bit above nature, that is only someone that has a part of that name can really understand, can really relate to, and can really feel um, connected. So. I do, I do hear your point, because it's a question, and you challenged this already uh, when we spoke about Abraham Avinu. Uh, any person might say, I believe, in the exact same way that you say that you feel, I also feel so. Rambam, right? yeah. Rambam is the logical way of thinking, not the belief way of thinking. Right. He says, you must try to understand yes. God, uh -huh. not, the to, Rambam. not to feel God. What he says is true for us, yeah. for the Muslim, it's true that he is God, the So, but, but, but there's you one truth. any proof of what you say. Okay, wait, so, so, so there's a few things. So here... Yeah, you can believe it. It's you can belief. believe it, it's yeah. Also so there's a few things. So we, first of all, it's, it's, there's, after, there's one truth after all. So when many people uh, ask, well, why do you differ this over that? Because that's true. I, I, I cannot say that I have a proof, uh, but we're going to try and speak about evidence in our history. Because through these stories, we can find that, um, um, that there is uh, uh, evidence to this concept and idea. And we'll talk about it. I do hear your question. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging question. Let's try and see that we have evidence um, to this. If you'll find it... And then it's very good. Um, yes. But you had mentioned that in Christianity you're saying it's more of an intellectualized type of belief. Because the yes. belief in, uh, in, in, in Jesus is not intellectual. <laughs> okay, right. it's a very good point. 
So, so for, for other religions and worshipping idols, sometimes it has nothing to do with logic, it has a lot to do with emotions or with um, some kind of tradition or rumor um, that led people um, to react in that way. You can think about all the examples that Rabbi Silva spoke about on Sunday, very interesting examples. It, it has, doesn't necessarily have to do with logic. But the main point that they all have in common is that it's definitely not what we call belief. Well, they say they believe, but believe means that I don't need to answer you to your challenging questions. I don't need to bring proof to that. In Judaism, belief does not mean that, it's, uh, that I don't need to bring answers to your questions. That's not the concept of belief. Belief is not a, 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 a card that we pull out and we say, oh, don't challenge me, don't challenge me. This, was, I was, this is what I was taught at the age of three, don't, don't, don't challenge me. Belief, the way we understand the idea of belief, it, it means that this is who we are. And that's why if you speak to any other person, they're not going to bring this idea that this is who I am, that, that, that it forces. In other words, belief, it's not up to you. And here's a story I wanted to tell it to you about a, a famous um, TV um, a reporter that he interviews a lot of from uh, Orthodox rabbis and always challenges them about the concept of faith. And he said to an interview with Rabbi Yoel Khan, the year was 1992 or 1993, and he, um, he spoke to him and he told him, they were having a whole conversation about belief and about God and about the mitzvot, very interesting. But there's a, a, I think the, the, the best part of that interview is, um, his name is Amnon Levi, and you can look him up. He likes to interview Rabbi Amnon Yitzchak, um, because they, they always uh, challenge each other. Very interesting, very, very opposite. It's a far one. Yes. Yeah. And... Um, it's very interesting. He's very interesting, yes. I, I can't say I agree with everything he said. Um, there are also political issues that I think yeah. rabbis should stay away from p politics. That's what the, the Rebbe's uh, opinion was. So we can give the Torah to every single person. No, and the rabbi said you should, yes, involve in politics. Not, not with the title of a, of a rabbi. Or oh, of a, okay. you, you should vote. That's one thing as, as, as any other uh, civilian in the, in the country. Uh, but not get involved in being opinionated because if so then we could we, instead of trying to approach each and every person on the street we would say only i'm only going to approach a person that fits in exact, exactly to my left stream opinion or my right uh, stream opinion so back to the story of um of uh, um amnon levy and rabbi yoel khan who was the chaser of the rebbe he memorized the rebbe's fabregans Amnon Levy said, you know what, it's just so difficult to, uh, to argue with you. Because with other people, the argument is, um, they say they believe or they can explain a certain logic. I say I don't believe, um, um, and, and, and this is my, my logic. But you are saying, Rabbi Yolkan, you are telling me that I truly am a believer. That inside, you really do believe. Other people are, are trying to explain their belief and they're trying to uh, um, bring logic to their belief and bring proof to their belief. Rabbi Yoel Khan is telling him, you are a believer, you just don't know it. This is a and he's saying, no, I'm not a believer. He's telling it with all of his heart. 100% I'm not a believer. Rabbi Yoel Khan says, no, you are a believer. You just don't know it. You're not aware of it. Where does that idea come from? It comes from chapter 18 right here in, uh, in, in, in Tanya. And, 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 and this is again the idea that belief is not something external. You cannot, why can a Yid never convert? Why can I just one day say that I'm not interested in this religion and I don't believe anymore? I just don't believe. We cannot, uh, we cannot change our belief because it is who we are. It's part of us. But that's a belief. Okay, so that's, that's one answer, right? right one, one answer. But the second answer is that we'll find evidence for this idea. How? Okay. Now, yes, when you're prepared to hear, then, uh, then now we can try and speak about it. Sometimes, by the way, we might not be able to... Uh, um, um, it, it has a lot to do with feeling as well.
oh. which means it's not, so, but we can openly discuss it and we can speak about uh, the history of Am Yisrael and we need, I think, a professor for history to come and to tell us the amount of times that Am Yisrael uh, were, um, uh, faced, um, uh, faced annihilation and even individual persecution. Starting from the story of Avraham Avinu. Then, welcome, Uchim Abayim, chapter 18. Um, then, uh, the, 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 the evidence, we, it's, it, sometimes it, yet, it depends on each and everyone's personal uh, approach and personal understanding. We can have here a person, and I have someone in mind that sometimes he comes to Chabad of Rehav, he's not here right now, but he tells us a fascinating story how he left a promising career and became a Baal Tshuva one day and it, it, it makes no sense there's no there's no uh, there's no logic to that and it's not a matter of belief it's not that he, uh, uh, he he woke up at a certain moment and he said okay I believe in God it's not where it started it started for an internal uh, voice or feeling uh, that, uh, that, that, that that led him to make a foolish decision, an illogical decision to live a, leave a promising career in a field that you are so talented to, to go uh, back to your roots as, uh, as, as an observant Jew. And this is something that does not really exist uh, in other, in other um, r r religions. No, the one who goes so, to Puma or in an ashram or in a convent, it's, right. it's so, the same. So, so, um, uh, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good point. It's a good point. I, I think that at the, at the end of the day, if you would tell that person... It's temporary. And, the, so, and those who live in the, in the, in the Hasidish world or in the Litvakish world, who live, they, and they go to the ashram, and they come from a Hasidish family. Right. Or they go or whatever. So they go. It, it, it's not going to solve our belief, and this is what we're going to see, doesn't solve all the emotional problems of a person. Some people need to go, and, and they don't need to, but they are lacking something, and they go and they find uh, um, it, it in, in Buddha. By the way, the famous, one of the famous Buddhism, um, Buddhist, uh, he, any Jew that came to him, he was not prepared to accept him, and he told him, you have the original. Why are you coming to me? And many people that were back um, in India, they were, what's it called? They were Tarmilaim. They walked around India and all of these places. They still felt very empty. And there's a Chabad rabbi here in Jerusalem that was one of those. Uh, um, and they, he went and, and, and he couldn't find no, nothing that could quench his thirst. And then he found a, um, a Yiddishkeit and that helped him. So, you, you bring up a very good question that personally, I, it's a logical question. But if you would tell that to the, the person that I have in mind that went through that certain journey, he would tell you there's no chance. This is not just a random feeling that I was just looking for something to entertain me. This is who I am. When a person goes for Buddha, it's not that this is who he is. He is searching for something that can provide him a certain... Uh, um, uh, supply that he needs, if it's emotional, if it's logical, if it's physical. But a person does not go searching for those things because this is who he is. And this is why, in, 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 in um, so, 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 so I think we can also feel that each and every one of us on a different scale, not such an extreme scale, because in that case it was pretty extreme when a person suddenly changes his whole career, his whole lifestyle, and when it's not when he's 20 years old, that's when he's 40, uh, uh, 40 years old. So, the, the, the other thing is what's called the bus coil. What is a bus coil? A bus coil is what we, we don't hear anymore, but we are supposed to hear. We, maybe in the past we did hear. A voice from heaven, which is basically the other side of our soul, that uh, 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 wakes us up sends us a certain message and that's why sometimes in our life and each and every one of us here we can relate to it we have some kind of emotional feeling some kind of holy feeling that we want to get close to Hashem and this is something that definitely happens and let's try and memorize those times uh, maybe someone here wants to share a certain story about that 
or, 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 or tell us that feeling that, that he had. Where is that from? There was no one that believed in the cup of tea that in the middle of the day he said, you know what, I, there's something that is causing me a, a, a holy feeling in relation to that cup of tea. You because know. that's an external belief and our belief is internal, it's who we are. L'chaim. <laughs> That's the general, the general concept, concept, the general idea. And uh, let's let's try and read a bit of it in the words of the um, of uh, the Outer Rebbe. Um, and I, I want to ask Mordechai please to read for us the first, uh, the first and second paragraph. Okay. To explain more adequately and more precisely the word "very" in the verse. But the thing is very nigh unto thee. What is the verse? The verse, Ki karov elecha, this is what he's reading, the Pasuk. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it should be recognized with certainty that even the person who, whose understanding is the knowledge of God is limited and who has no heart to comprehend the greatness of the blessed and so to produce therefrom awe and love of God, even in his mind and understanding alone. However, it is a very nice thing for him to observe and practice all of the commandments of the Torah and the study of the Torah, which counterbalances them all. In his very mouth and heart, from the depths of his heart, in true sincerity, with fear and love, namely the hidden love, in the heart of all Jews, which is an inheritance to us from our patriarchs. However, we must first of all preface a clear and precise explanation of the origin and essence of this love, how it became our inheritance, and how awe is also incorporated in it. Yefe. Yefe. So, first of all, what Al Terebi says over here is. He, he, he tells us 17 chapters we spoke about a person that, that tries to develop this love and this fear towards Hashem and from Hashem and this should influence his actions. That is someone that has a good understanding, he can use his mind. But even if he does not, for some reason, he's not able to use it, here we are going to see how we have this Ahavam Suteris, this hidden love that is given to us by our forefathers um, and um, our parents. <clears throat> okay. So we can continue. Let's continue um, the, 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 next, uh, the next paragraph. In the meantime, are there any questions, any thoughts about this, uh, this concept? Yes. Yes. The basis for what we are studying this, on this issue is the nefesh ashenit b'Israel, yhelet miroka mima'al mamash. If you don't have this, this has no basis. Right, but, but here it's very important to say that, but, but, but what is that basis? That basis is about who I am, not what I believe in. Exactly. Okay, that is the point. This is the point, but also and that one is a belief. Right, so, so it, 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 it still remains a, a belief, but if we find, if we are able to find certain evidence to that idea, then we can say it's not only a belief, Hana and her uh, uh, seven children. That is a great story that can, uh, uh, and it's not the only story, there were many people that are, are well known as, as um, they weren't very knowledgeable, they did not know much about Hashem, and throughout the generations a lot of them didn't, weren't even observant. But when it came to the time that a person had to moser nefesh, mesirut nefesh, in that case uh, he was prepared to moser nefesh even though he does not know much, he did not practice much, 
that the Mesirut Nefesh is because this is who I am. The jihadist does the same. Okay, so here we go back to the, the, uh, um, to the story of the jihadist. The jihadist is there to promote an ideology. He is there because he's fighting for a piece of land, he wants the world to know it, he wants to kill as many anim enemies as possible, and no, that's why he, he does he it. He wants you should believe in uh, whatever. There's no person that just, and it, it, throughout history, even uh, th this is why, we, let's go back to the story of Avraham Avinu. Uh, um, um, the only time that there was real Mesirut Nefesh with no external uh, wills added to that was Avraham Avinu. And where specifically with Avraham Avinu? There were ten Nisyonot that Avraham Avinu had. Which challenge was the challenge that Avraham Avinu truly was Moshe Nefesh? His son. Very good. Why? The Torah tells, Hashem tells, please overcome this challenge. Why does he use the term please? He never used the term please in other challenges. Because he said, if you actually are able to overcome this challenge, it's a proof that all the other challenges were done out of a pure desire and connection. And why is that? What was so special about Avraham? Um, killing his son. There are many people in history that could have actively, we know from the Torah, the Torah says a person is not allowed which means that people used to, unfortunately, they used to uh, um, kill their children. Uh, terrible. He wasn't the first one to do it. And the Alter Rebbe himself asks, if Hashem would uh, reveal himself to you, you might have actually considered doing it or you might actually do it. So maybe for us today we are not on a high a, a level enough. But for for so, what was so unique about this challenge with Abraham? Because there was no external reason, there was no additional reason to him acting in this way. Okay. When or let's bring the other famous story of Abraham or Sir Nefesh is with the bonfire and Nimrod. Nimrod, he Abraham goes, he kills all the idols in, in his father's shop. And he tells him the idols killed each other. Of course, it's, uh, uh, Terach knew that that is a lie. He's making a joke out of the whole idea. And he brought him in front of Nimrod. And when he brings him in front of Nimrod, Nimrod gives him a, two um, choices. It's or you accept our idols, or you go into the bonfire. And he was thrown into the bonfire. He was rescued. What is wrong about that mysterious nefesh? Why was that not enough? Because that is promoting your ideology in front of the entire world. There's another desire to it. It's like if someone would say, I believe in that cup of tea, and people would confront him and they would say, or you say that you don't believe, or we will kill you, could possibly be that a person would say, it's worth it for me, because of my ego, to say that I still believe in, in, um, in that cup of tea. But when Avram was there shechting his son, no one was a witness. The two uh, um, people that accompanied him, they stayed away. Not only that, but by killing his son, he is basically destroying his legacy. Who will teach his idea on to the next generation? That's why that is the most powerful Nesirut Nefesh ever. And that is because it's part of who we are. There was a famous, just to end before the questions, there was a famous... Um, maybe it was Socrates or one of the other Greek or in the times of the Romans <clears throat> that um, they wanted to kill him because they did not want him to spread his ideas about science and so on they wanted to keep the people to very Socrates. Socrates and he also when they asked him the students you're going to die he said I'm very happy that I'm going to die don't feel that I'm sad because uh, and when, when, when he died, he did not see it as a sacrifice. If there's a, um, another reason or some benefit, so there's no sacrifice. You are continue on living in a different method, in a different way, without a body. But your thoughts, they stay on. So is that, being, is that willing to give up our existence for God? No. But when uh, 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 the son of Hana, who did not know yet much, he just know that this is his belief, when he was prepared to die al Kiddush Hashem, that is 100% nothing else involved. 
especially at such an age. And that's just one example. That's why we need a historian to go and to tell us how throughout history people that had no connection, they were still prepared to um, to the Daniel. Yeah, just something to, <coughs> to, uh, to add to what said. He said this is also a belief, but there is a difference. This is the belief in the, I mean, this is, first of all, this is reality. Who says it? Who says it? The Alter Ebbe says it. Uh, okay. If it's yes. his opinion. What? No. I believe it. This is the Torah. This I is believe in what he says. What? But it's a belief. I am oh, but No, but again, belief. there is a difference between a belief, a belief, or a belief in, in the true reality. So, this, you, you so don't call, trust, it trust. call it feeling. Call it feeling. Again, this is reality. This is it's a personal reality. And, and so even the example you made of, of, of uh, Akedat Yitzchak, Rav Kook has a completely different outlook. Okay, um, um, it, it's not to, to say that there's one, but this is definitely uh, an uh, outlook. Uh, uh, it's definitely an outlook, Rambam, but it brings... Rambam has a different outlook. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, it's not... Uh, cook. Uh, cook, yeah. We spoke about it once, I think, right? Yes. When uh, God tells him, Lech Lecha, yeah. he makes a mitzvah, and he goes. When God tells him, Kach et bincha et yechidecha, he takes and goes. And doing this, he's creating a mitzvah. When you do a mitzvah, you create an angel. Then, when he was trying to shech his son, not God, a malach told him, Al tishlach yadcha. Malach is the result of the mitzvah he did. Rakuk says, the malach was the hush, was the feeling he had in himself that God couldn't have asked him to do this. And at this point, he realizes what Rashi says, that God didn't say Meshacheteu, but Baaleu, which means it was his conscience that told him, God couldn't have asked me to do this. Right. God doesn't want it. As a matter of fact, God didn't want it. At the end of the story, in the Shech. It's in the Bepshutosh and Mikra, this is what he wanted. That's the pshuto, the simple story of Haaleu Sham Leola means. Yeah. I'm telling the story of Rabbi. Okay. Rashi. Right. Rashi, when he sees the Hiri Rashi. Rashi says it after after he saves it. It's not the Nikre. Right. But the. This is Rashi. So you take Rashi and you don't take Rabu. Okay. This is your point of view. But the point is that we're not saying that this is the only opinion about the Akedah. But it is a certain thought that exists about the Akedah that br expresses a quality that, that Avraham Avinu had and that, that we have today. And this is what he says, Yerusha lanu me'avotenu. This is an inheritance from, from our fathers. Who are we referring to? Starting from Abraham that taught us this thing. So, yes, the, the fact that there are many other opinions about the story of the Akedah, it, it does not say anything about this idea. I believe so, this. But it is a belief, a feeling. It's okay, not, but... Uh, what right. you said, you don't even need Rashi. If Abraham didn't do this in public, he was alone, competing alone. So what? And he alone decided not to kill so, him. So you can't attribute he, to he, him a desire to show off... He decided not to kill him. At the end of the story, the, the, the Torah is clear. Right, but it wasn't him that decided. He was stopped. By the angel. Yeah. By a mother. And the Torah Shabbat says, how is it created the Malach? But the mitzvah you do. It's not the well, only way. It's, it's not it's the, the only way. way. It's it doesn't exist only pshat. Okay. You can't, how do you, how do you work feeling? The pshat says, what feeling? How do you work feeling? You don't know what feeling is. Right, but that's not the only way that a malach is created. The malach could be bemet, an emissary that is sent by God to stop him, to tell him that I don't want you to do it, was just a test. But let, let's, let's go back to, 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 to here. The point is that when we say this is a belief, we've got to know that this is a belief, it means this is who we are. Yes, we believe in this, but let's put a focus again on, 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 on personal feelings. Take it from here. This is the concept, this is the idea. I think that every single one over here can identify with the idea that in his life 
the voices that he heard, not the voices, but the feelings that he had, or it's while a person experiences Judaism. You experience it and you feel that it's who you are. It's not like you are forced to do something. It's got to be part of who we are. When we celebrate the Shabbat, it's not like a, a, a way that, okay, this is what I'm commanded to do, but it's expressing who I am. That's, um, uh, that's one of the reasons, by the way, that the Rebbe said that um, a healthy life is a life that is aligned with Torah and mitzvot. Why is that? Because no one's asking you to do something that you are not. The moment you are told to do something that you are not, that you're not capable of, that it's not connected to you, don't like doing it. A person does not like doing a job, work at a place that is not uh, fitted, that he, that he doesn't feel that... The, in, in Yiddishkeit, the Rebbe always said, Torah Chayim, uh, the Torah is a, a lesson to us, a message to us today to, to, to know and to understand and to accept that this is healthy life, which this can take us to a different topic about, um, about people uh, um, that say that they find it a, a person, there was once a person that just said um, he, is, uh, he loves Hashem, he's a reporter, he loves God and he also likes men okay so it's a different it's a, it, it will take us to a different topic uh, we, we we might have a separate shiur uh, specifically about that the rebbe's approach to that whole uh, idea um, but the point is that what the torah tells us is what's healthy uh, um, for you so person you can't say i love hashem you can say i love hashem and i like and i like i like men and say it but uh, the idea is that what Hashem tells you to do is what's actually good for you that's good for you keeping and and this is also a place where we see evidence for kashrut for example not eating blood um, um, uh, um, meat, separated between uh, milk and meat these are things that are also healthy for a person it's not why we do it we're not based on logic we're based on belief but this belief ends up also to uh, um, is brought down to logical letters as well let's um, let's continue um, um, the, the, the next paragraph um, I would like to ask Avraham to please read for us the explanation is as follows the patriarchs early constituted the chariot and therefore they merited the blessing transmitted to their descendants, coming after them forever, and nefesh ruach and neshma, from the ten holy sephirot of the four worlds of Atul, Nezud, Vidya, Yetzria, and Asiya, As to each according to his station and according to his works. Even the most worthless of worthless men and the sinners of Israel are thus endowed at the time of marital union with, at any rate, a nefesh de nefesh of Malchu de Asiya, royalty in the world of action, which is the lowest grade of holiness in the world of Asiya. Nevertheless, since the latter of the ten holy Sifrot it is compounded of them all, including Chokmah, the Asiya, wisdom of the world of action, wherein is clothed Chokmah, the Machut, the Atzilo, wisdom of royalty in the world of emanation, incorporating, no, yeah. incorporating Chokmah, the Atzilo, wisdom of the world of emanation, which is illuminated by the light of the blessed and so itself, as is written, the Lord hath founded the earth in wisdom, and in wisdom hast thou made them all. Thus it comes to pass that the blessed and so is barred, as it were, in the wisdom of the human soul, of whatever sort of Jew, a Jew, he may be. In turn, the soul's faculty of wisdom, together with the light, 
human soul of whatever sort of true unity in turn so stuck to wisdom together with the light of the blessed and so that is vested in spreads throughout the entire world animating it from head to foot so to speak as is written wisdom gives life to them that have it at times sinners of Israel may even bring down very lofty souls which had been in depths of the sort of hope, as experienced in the Sefer HaGidun. Gidun Kudun. So, <clears throat> again on the same note, this is a lot of Kabbalah, Kabbalah words and Kabbalah uh, ideas with the Sfirot and what exactly the Sfirot are. So, I, I want to give just an example from DNA and from another very interesting, um, <clears throat> I forgot who found it, you know what, I can check it right now, but um, <clears throat> the way that the sun, um, the sun uh, flower, right, there's a sunflower, um, has, it, it's got these, uh, Pods. sorry? Pods. Pods, right. So the, the way it's basically made, and we can find it also in the Itztrubal, the Itztrubal, what is an Itztrubal? We have it on the trees at Fort, um, oh, let me, let me, I'll tell you the exact, the pine sorry, the, pa uh, the pine cone, yeah. So it's got these, uh, right, also these, uh, uh, in the, in the pina. Um, so, and there was someone that found this, I just, someone, it's called the, uh, Spirals, and this was this was. I'll tell you now the word for it. Fibonacci. Have you heard of Fibonacci's yes, theory? It's a mathematical. Uh, oh. Yes. It's a math mathematical order that you find in nature, um, and it's called a sequence. Sorry, it's a sequence. Uh, Fibonacci is he Italian? Yes. He's Italian. Uh, so, so um, what did he discover? He discovered that everything um, with those pods, dots, or whatever it is, it, everything is built out of a sum of the first two. In other words, it goes one, and then another one, and then that turns into uh, a one plus one is two, mm -hmm. and then two plus one is three. Um, two plus three is five. Uh, uh, three plus two is five. Uh, five plus three is eight, etc. And that's the that's the sequence. If I'm not mistaken, this is the um, this is the idea. And 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 this is it's not DNA, but we also know that there is DNA. In other words, the point is that our souls that we have, the DNA basically comes from our Abraham Avinu, and this is passed on through. Um, uh, th through the, uh, um, um, the Jewish mother and this DNA is basically what gives us the idea or, or the feeling that we are actually Jewish and here uh, uh, once again back to the same concept because this is the whole chapter there was once um, a, a wealthy person that came to the river for a private audience with his wife and he asked the Rebbe, he told his, uh, he's asking for a bracha for his brother that lives in Australia and has absolutely nothing to do with Judaism. So the Rebbe said, there's no such a thing as a Yid that has absolutely nothing to do with Judaism. He, 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 is, a, he is a Yid. So it's not that he has nothing to do with Judaism. You can say he doesn't practice now uh, um, uh, Jew, a Jewish lifestyle. But doesn't mean that he's not Jewish and there was uh, one rabbi that came to the Rebbe and he told the Rebbe I want to wish you Hatzlacha in your mission of bringing uh, people that are far bringing them close and the Rebbe told him you can't use the term far they are not far they are they are, they are Yidim and I think that this is one of the things that are, are less taught and less ex ex explained by many parts of the from world today and this is what pushes off many many uh, um, Jews that are not observant um, and here's another one that uh, the person asks the Rebbe um, he says um, 
how can a, can a person think that he belongs to a religion even though he does not believe in God? And <clears throat> and that's, that's just one of the questions, but the Rebbe's answer is like this. The Jewish faith is not like the other faiths because the Jewish faith is not something additional to the uh, essence, the existence of a person, but he, he, ha, adam, atzma, which means that itself is the existence of a person. Um, whoever was born a human cannot change to become an animal or a plant or so anything else. Change gender. <laughs> anyway, uh, and, um, and in that same way, um, he might be able to change his behavior. You can change your behavior. You can act like an animal. If you want to act like a plant, no one's going to stop you. But you can't, and, that's it, and that's the point of a yid. And if people outside would know, that if you take a person that is called secular and you compare him with a person that is 100% from an observant and learns Torah all the day, in essence there is no difference because they both have the same DNA. You can say that this person is practicing Judaism and this person is not. But there is not, there's no separation that people try and claim that he's not Jewish anymore. Because he didn't behave in that way. There's no such a thing. A person has this DNA. That's who he is. Yes. Oh. Yeah. If you ask a secular person, what are you? That's the I'm Jewish. Hundred percent. And they feel it. And it was when there was Yom Yerushalayim. And 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 this is one of the. It's like a person that sometimes is he's afraid to commit. That's, that in a certain way, he's, he's afraid to go until the end, right? Person, it's, it's with anything, a person wants to open a business, but he opens, he opens half a business or he does something on the side because he's very afraid to quit his uh, comfortable job and to go uh, um, full force ahead and to pursue his, whatever, his, his business that he's trying to. Um, and in this same way, it's like, right, when they, when they in the Six Day War, um, Yom Yerushalayim. And this is something that is celebrated. Even the secular Jews, they, they celebrate it. But you ask them, okay, so what is Yerushalayim? It could be they are afraid to say Yerushalayim means Yerushalayim, a complete awe, awe, complete fear. Because immediately that's associated with us sitting all day and learning and davening all day and keeping 5,000 mitzvot. So they're very much afraid uh, from that. But in essence... They, they celebrate Yom Yerushalayim and it was a special time. The yeah, Rebbe was very many, upset, sorry. How many people <coughs> fast on Yom Kippur? Exactly. It's, and that's another point of evidence. Shabbat, they'll, they'll right. That's another, thank you for bringing that up because we're looking for evidence for the idea that it's part of who we are. A person that is secular in a different religion, it's not that he would say, you know what, I keep... Uh, I keep Easter. That's something that I'm makbid to keep. He doesn't believe. He doesn't believe at all. Why? Because it's external. If you don't believe in that cup of tea, you're not going to drink a cup of tea once a year for the sake of him. Maybe there's a cup of tea. No. But if, you, if it's part of who you are, so yes, you will keep Yom Kippur even though you don't keep the rest of the holidays because you know that this is who you are. You just say, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm very afraid to commit. We all have a Yetzir heart. This is another thing. Even Yidin that are observant, they also fight a challenge. They're not 100% all the time. And in, in other words, and we're going to end with this, we are all on a scale or on a journey. And we are, on this scale, sometimes we are a bit more to the side. Sometimes we are a bit left. But we are all on the same scale. We are all uh, Jews with this DNA and... We're all on the journey of practicing as much as we can of Torah and Mitzvot. Let's end. Did we end? We didn't end the, the last paragraph, right?